What's up, guys? I am here with Chris. What's going on, guys? Chris is a eBay reseller and another YouTuber who I'm staying with for the next couple days. And we just, look at all that. That's all today. Isn't that insane? How many packages do you think that is? Uh, probably 50. 50, geez. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's not one day's worth, but it's two days worth, a day and a half it's worth, a day right? day and a half's worth, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Your postal worker must be uh... <laughs> Yeah, my postal worker's a little annoyed with me, but we weren't able to get all of them done today, but that's okay because people are a little bit lenient because it's just after the holiday. They're not gonna be as lenient in a week from now when they need it for Christmas. They're yeah. gonna ship that same day. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so where did where did all those packages come from? Um, right now, I'm a multi-platform seller, so I'm on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, and that's where I get most of my sales. And I like selling physical products because it's just satisfying, touching the items and selling them. And it's awesome to have Jack stop by because he's a drop shipper. So it was a drop shipper. Was a drop shipper <laughs> and didn't really get to handle the products. But not that he's new to physical products, but I just only do physical products. Yeah, and it's been really cool seeing the whole setup. We're about to show you guys what inside the house looks like. And so Chris has about 5,000 items, right? 5,000? 5, 5 to 7,000. 5,000 items in his eBay store, which is insane. That's a lot for a physical store. Like, even for a drop shipping store, that's a lot. But when you actually have all that inventory, like, there's a reason that that, that pile is so big, right? Look at all that stuff. And again, that's from three different marketplaces. So he cross posts everything. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And like inside, you can definitely tell he's a reseller. There is like stuff in every room, inventory all over the place. It's pretty cool. We're in California. It's a little rainy right now, though. All right, let's go inside. I'm just going to shut this door real quick. Awesome. And so I wanted to show them the labeling system. He's got all of these bins, right? But look at all this, there's stuff like, and look at all these shoes, so many shoes. Look at that. Isn't that insane? It's gotta be like 30 pairs of shoes, more than that. All right, so this is the garage. This is where probably most of your inventory is kept, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just shelves upon shelves upon shelves, and they have this labeling system. Yep. Isn't that crazy? So we can right actually... here, as you can see, each bin has a label on it, and there are 400 bins in here, and about 15 items in each one, so that's around, that's a little over 5,000 items, and then they've all made their way in the closets, and my bedroom, there's inventory <laughs> everywhere at this point. And so it's pretty cool, because I, I was just helping him pack and ship stuff, right? And so he writes, like, all of his titles have a, a little string that shows what bin the item is in, and then it also has a code, right? So it would be like 00108 in like D15, right? So you'd go into this bin, look in it, and then there's a bunch of other items, and you would just read the little labels on the items. I hope that stays in place. Oh, no, my bad. See, like this, they got little labels on them. And it's pretty awesome, like, when the... So he's had inventory for a long time. So the labeling system, when it like when he started, he didn't have as good of a labeling system. And so it's really interesting seeing how like the kind of transition to the system that most of the objects have, which makes it really easy to find them. And it's been, it's just awesome seeing stuff done at this scale and seeing all of these systems in place. Oh man, I'm just gonna leave this right here for now. And then there's, look, we can just go down these hallways. Look at this. Keep going. More and more and more. Oh, over here. More stuff. Sorry, guys. I know it's really dark. And keep going. Look at this. So much stuff. All these coats. And so most, most of the stuff that Chris sells is shoes, clothing. And apparently, how much percentage did you say of stuff sold online is clothing? Half. Half. Isn't that insane? I had no idea. Like, I understand that, you know, people buy a lot of clothing, but I didn't realize that half of our online sales are clothes. That's insane. Yeah, a lot of people have really, really clean um, return policies. So because you can't really feel and touch the item, customers expect to be able to try it. If they don't like to send it right back. How often? Do you know what your return rate is? It's about 5%. 
five percent. Gotcha. So, uh, guys, this is one of the reasons why none of my staff is in, allowed in here is because it's not quite safe yet. Some of the things are piled too high. I'm about to get onto a stool right now, and that's dangerous. When you're getting um, in business insurance, it's a lot cheaper if they don't have to climb anything. Makes sense. Yeah, how many employees do you have, and what do they do? I have three contractors. Well, I have three contractors. One lists, one ships. I'm sorry, one lists, one ships. I'm sorry, wow. One photographs, one describes, and one lists. And what, uh, what point would you say you got your first other person involved? Um, right away. I, I never, Immediately. <laughs> I never wanted to do this by myself. Um, some people enjoy doing it themselves, but I like the camaraderie of being around different people. And I just, I've never been interested in doing it by myself because that's not my jam. I met a lot of resellers when I first started that were very lonely and I didn't want to be in that bucket. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's been cool. I met uh, one of the... One of the employees, his name's James. He's the photographer, right? That's right. He was, he was real friendly, cool guy. He brought us food, some Thanksgiving leftovers. It was pretty awesome. And so also, he has a bunch of these like setups like this. And so it has like laptop. And here he has this Dymo printer, this thing. Prints labels, but with heat. So you just have to buy the label paper. You don't have to buy ink. And when you're printing like, you know, 20, 30 labels a day, you'd run out of inkjet really, really fast, and ink's really expensive. Um, so that was pretty cool. I'd never seen one of those before. Like, I know that restaurants and stuff use receipt paper like that, but he's also got a puppy he's looking after over here. And he's hey, little dude. Out. That's why he's by the sink. <laughs> yeah, he's sick right now. So he's conveniently placed, so... Uh, Ate a bit too so, quick. No animal cruelty here. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have that disclaimer. This is the back view. It's pretty crazy. I know you guys can't see much right now because it's all rainy. But there's normally like a really, really, really awesome view back there. It's pretty cool. I really love visiting people, especially when they have systems like this. I love seeing what stuff looks like when it's like hugely scaled, right? Um, and it's also awesome, like... Chris started on eBay, and the you started the YouTube channel at the same time as eBay, right? Yeah, I've been doing YouTube and eBay for a little, around two years. Mm -hmm. And so what, what inspired you to start eBay and a YouTube channel versus just eBay? I just like documenting what I'm doing. It's fun to meet people. When I first started YouTube, I honestly was doing it to attract people who were better at eBay to talk to me and it was successful. So if you do YouTube to meet people and for community basis, it's a lot easier to, um, to not be disappointed. Yeah. If you're looking for some Just if I keep or, doing it. Or cash flow is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely easier to earn money from a channel if you've been running a YouTube channel for a while and then you can kind of figure out how to monetize an existing channel or have a product, right? But if you're just starting the YouTube channel for money, very few people actually find success in that. It's one thing if you've already had success in some other branch of your life, you have a lot of money, and then you make a YouTube channel to earn some money, different story. But if you have like nothing, and you're just trying to make some money, and you start a YouTube channel, but you're not passionate about something, most people give up, you know, because it's a lot of work making videos, and sometimes like people can be pretty mean. <laughs> it's, uh, it's intense, and it, it has a really fascinating effect on you as an individual, and that's something that I really love. Like, any, most YouTubers that I've met, like, it, it takes a certain kind of personality to continuously create content, you know? For sure. All right, guys. Yeah, that's nah, fine. Oh, look at that, it's all even now. Yeah. Anything you wanna share? No, guys, stay, hang in there. Building a business takes a while and it's about continuous improvement. I have a YouTube channel called Daily Refinement if you wanna stop by and take a look at how I do things. See the link in the description. Um, but. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Happy Black Friday. I'll see you guys soon. All right, guys. See you next time. Ciao.